Uh, <laughs> Let's unforgiving Ross Abian Desert. Good morning, welcome to Cool Outdoors. I am your host, Brandon Scott, and with me is Nash. Good morning. We are not quite in the Olympic National Park. We are on the Olympic Peninsula. We are going to be walking into the Buckhorn Wilderness on the northeast section of the park. We are doing the Lower Gray Wolf River Trail. We have done this before, but we did it before we started making videos, so we figured we'd come out here and do it again because A, it's a nice trail, B, it is only March, so it's, you're pretty much restricted to either going to the ocean, doing a beach trail, doing low elevation river trails, which is what we're doing today, or going out to the desert, and the desert hasn't been warm enough to um, get wildflowers just yet. Hopefully this coming weekend before he starts his summer job, we'll go out to the desert somewhere and go see some desert wildflowers, and same with the coast. Stuff out there hasn't quite blossoming and flowering quite yet, so we'll give another week or two before going out there and the tides aren't very good at the moment. The low tides are at night, which means the high tides are during the day. So there's no beach to walk in anyway. So anyway, we're out here at the Lower Gray Wolf Trail. I've got lists now to make sure I, you know, talk about good things. Uh, location and trail. Yeah, I talked about that. The Lower Gray Wolf is, is about 4.2 miles one way. I do have three books. I have the updated Olympic Mountains Trail Guidebook, the fourth edition that came out in 2017 or whatever. So I do have updated books for you now. Got the day hiking in Olympic Peninsula along with the Olympic Mountains Trail Guide and Day Hike Olympic Peninsula. So three different books. They all talk about this book and they all say the same thing. The Lower Gray Wolf River is 4.2 miles one way. So eight and a half mile round trip. You used to be able to go further, but the reason you stop where you stop is because there was a footbridge that went over the Gray Wolf River and that washed out like 15 years ago. So if you want to go up the great upper Gray Wolf, you have to come down from Slab Camp and go down the ridge line and then up the upper portion of the river, which is a different trail in our section. I'll also show you that because over the winter we've been making lists of each wilderness area in Washington. I'll put screenshots of it there. So we'll have a top 25 list for each wilderness area if it makes it out to 25. And then I took our list and combined them together and made an overall top 10. I believe the Gray Wolf sits at Number nine overall, because it is my nine out of 10 in the Buckhorn Wilderness, and Nash didn't list it that far. He only listed it to six out of 10, I believe. So yeah, it sits at nine out of 10. So it's a, like I said, it's a four-ish mile river walk. The first mile and a half or two miles, you're not really along the river because you got to go down to the river. Then you get to what's called two mile camp. And then from then on, you're pretty close to the river. And then where we stop at the footbridge is obviously going to be a nice, if I remember correct, is a pretty nice sand and gravel bar to hang out on. Um, geology. Let's see here. We're going to be walking through the crescent formation most of the time. There's going to be a little bit of um, glacial deposits from the last ice age, but it's pretty much all going to be crescent formation, which is a basalt formation. Think Hawaiian Islands got smushed up against the coast of Washington about six, about, sorry, the Crescent Formation formed about 50 million years ago. So somewhere after that, 45 million years or 40 million years ago or so is when it got smushed up against the coast of, or the coast of Washington. So it's going to be big pillow basalts and basalt formations and such like that. And that's what we'll be walking through. Um, other than that, let me check. So yeah, covered that, covered that, covered that, covered that, covered that. So uh, yeah, other than that, We'll uh, go hit the trail. It's We're on the dry side of the Olympics. This is where the rain shadow is because most of the storms come in from the southwest. So being on the northeast, all the mountains catch it. So it's drier and sunnier. It's going to be a nice sunny day anyway. Other than that, let's uh, go hit the trail. All right. So this is the start of the trail. And this is part of the Pacific Northwest Trail, which I don't know. I don't think that's currently current because you obviously can't cross the rivers so i think the current version of the pacific north trail west trail goes up the road and then comes down slab camp but clank is parked there it is a sunday in springtime with the sun out so there are six other cars in the parking lot when we were here last time there were no cars because it was middle of january we are there yeah, we're in the north unit of the buckhorn wilderness so there are what is that five micro wildernesses that surround olympic national park all but one of them have some sort of trail network in them and i've done a few of them um is silver lakes in the buckhorn wilderness or isn't the brothers wilderness i can't I remember no i think it's buckhorn is it buckhorn? brothers only has like three it's got yeah duck a bush and it's got 
Mount Jupiter and the brothers, and that's it. Yar, let's check. Yep, Silver Lake is in this one. So I've done Silver Lake. Nash wants to do Silver Lake. Also, Mount Townsend is in this wilderness. Um, the Upper Big Quill Scene Trail to Marmot Pass is probably the most famous trail in this wilderness. And there's a handful of others. Hopefully, we'll go complete them. But like I was saying earlier, I've done Silver Lakes at some point. We'll take Nash and my father to Silver Lakes, but before that, we'll probably go up to the top of Mount Townsend. So first, I'll tag the Silver Lakes Trail. I did a couple of falls ago, like fall of 22, I want to say. And I'll post that right there. Give it a couple of seconds, because when YouTube tags these videos, it has them sit in the top corner for like five or 10 seconds. And then Mount Townsend is mostly the same trail. I mean. To go to Silver Lakes, you walk the Mount Townsend Trail to the junction of the Silver Lake Trail, and then you turn left and go on Silver Lakes. So if you just stay on the Mount Townsend Trail, it'll eventually take you up to the top of Mount Townsend, which is one of the very tall peaks on the front eastern edge of the Olympics that you can see from Seattle. And concurrent, conversely, you can see pretty much looking straight down. It feels like you're looking straight down into Seattle from Mount Townsend. When we go do that hike, I'll post it there. And then, of course, when we get to the end of today's trail at the washout, I will tag the rest of the Grey Wolf Trail coming down from Slab Camp when we get there. Other than that, like I said, the first mile and a half or so to two-mile camp, you're not really near the river. You're kind of up in the woods above the river. The Grey Wolf River is down there. And then once you get to two-mile camp, you're either along the river or pretty close to the river for the last two, two and a half miles to the washout. So yeah, the last time we were here, it was similar weather. It was a little foggier, but it was January. It was and foggy, it, a little bit of rain. The trees were definitely like, pissing on us. Yeah, but it was also below freezing. So there was a whole bunch of ice in the mud and such, which was really pretty to look at. Yeah, I was looking back at our pictures last time here. We were all sort of in rain gear in the morning. Yep. That wet. So... Doing this trail twice, neither time with the spring foliage out yet. That's a bit of an oops on my part, but you can't let sunny days go to waste, even if the foliage hasn't foliated yet. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks in April, and of course also into May, we'll get some more river trails done where the foliage has leafed out and it'll be not only warmer, but slightly prettier, but I mean, with no foliage, you can see the mountains on the other side because you're not having to strain through 20 different maple and alder trees. He members. I mean, he members. A little bit of snow on the peak opposite us. Don't know what the name of that peak is because I don't know the Olympic Mountains all that well, even though I should. But again, there's just so much crap in this state to know and go see. It's hard to remember it all. Oh, that sunshine feels nice and warm. Now we are on True Trail. I don't think, let me check me map, but I don't think we've crossed in the wilderness just yet, but we did. At the end of the road back there, there was a nice wide former turnaround pullout thing, and I believe that was Two mile camp. No, we're not quite there yet. No, we're not there yet. Two mile camp is on the other side of the wilderness boundary, but we have reached the end of the road. We've got just a little further yet to get to the wilderness boundary. But I figured I'd show you what it looks like now that we're on a real trail in old and semi old growth stuff and not just 15 year old alders and maple trees choking the roadway. So now we will descend off this hump down to the Grey Wolf River and we shall be, if not within sight, within easy sound of the river for the rest of our duration. I'm into this part too. You taking pictures or a short? I'll do both. Okay, because we're about to descend, I believe. I'll get you in a short ride. Alright. It's all coming back to me now. Got a couple of short switchbacks to descend off this hump. And the river is right down there. Try and hold the camera steady because the 
video smoothing doesn't like these low light conditions. And if you're wondering what song I have stuck in my head for today's hike, it is Knocking at Your Back Door by Deep Purple off the Perfect Strangers album. Why? I have no idea, but it is. Nashy Poo in black, so it's hard to see him. It's dark and scaly. Out. Oh, it's dark and scaly. I'm not in much better. I'm in a medium blue pullover, but I do have my rust orange t-shirt on underneath in case it does get that warm, so I'll be pretty easy to see in this green landscape. I try to plan that on purpose now, make sure I'm wearing colors that will pop in the environment of which we are hiking. Oh no, he has caught back up to me. Whatever shall I do? Go ahead, love. Oi, bruv. Oi, bruv. Yes, we're idiots. Don't judge us. We're asking you to not judge us. It's yep. That's right. Not enough people will probably ever watch this video to judge me anyway. Although we are for like four subscribers away from 300, so who knows? Maybe. Yeah, totally. Oh, that's a bit wigglier than I was expecting. Come on, get me to the river. Yeah. Well, it is March, the snow is melting. Yar? Mm -hmm. Yar. Er, my girl, it's a river. Yer, it's a river. It's also, it's also a muddy trail. Oh goodness, that's a bit slippy and gross. Yeah. Survived this time. We want entertainment. POV, me falling on my ass for YouTube. Just kidding. Gotcha again. Any second now, there should be a wilderness sign. And then we will come into two mile camp. And no, I don't remember if there was a wilderness sign here last time I did it. I think there was, but I don't remember for sure. Man. 
with my luck, as soon as I want to turn the camera off is when we'll run into the wilderness sign. <laughs> that just seems to be how it always rolls. I mean, I can edit some of this out if I really need to. What are we at? Almost seven minutes? Meh. Theoretically, we crossed the wilderness boundary already, so. Hey, right on cue. I was just mentioning to the camera that according to the map and the hiking app, we should be crossing the boundary. of the sign well that was something else I was gonna talk about in the intro was our wilderness counter for the year I'm at technically three because of the two wildernesses I hit in Hawaii I think this is one for you this year because yeah. Baker Lake wasn't within um, Northrop wasn't within I think that's the only stuff we've done so far this year this calendar year since January 1st So, the people we saw were coming out of Two Mile Camp, which was right there. So we are along, we are in the river bottom. The gray Wolf is literally right over there. And I figured I'd turn the camera on so you could see all the alders and willows and such just starting to leaf out in the warmer weather we've been getting. So spring has officially sprung and is currently springing. Grab that rag. Huh? We'll grab that rag. What rag? Red rag right there. It's probably somebody's poo-poo rag. I ain't touching it. I don't even see it. Dude, I don't see anything. Okay, creek. Uh-huh. Hits the gravel or sand. Uh-huh. Right above it. Red. It's got a white tag. Nope. It's completely invisible to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see the green mossy rock over there? A little bit down to the left. To the right, I mean. Oh, now I see it. Yep, right there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that's... There's enough green over there to where it became completely invisible to my colorblind butt. Colorblind, yeah. Yup. Yes, YouTube, I am slightly colorblind. If I go to the grocery store and they set up those little pieces of artwork with like the soda can cases and they stack the green 7-up case next to the red coca-cola case if I'm more than 30 feet away from that they're the same color yes it's that bad I can't tell my blues from my purples greens from my reds oranges from the yellows such like that it's shades I can tell colors I can tell like there's greens here black you f dick I can tell different colors. It's when they're shades, different shades of the same color. I have trouble picking out. So, next stop will probably be the end of the trail. Because we ain't crossing that this time of year. Why not? Probably ain't crossing that any time of the year. If I want to go on the upper portion of the river, we'll just go up to Slab Camp and come down from there. It's only like a 1,500 foot drop. It's not even that bad. I was expecting something crazy like 3,000 feet because this is the very steep part of the Olympics, but no, it's only like 1,500 feet or something. Totally doable. The climb back out will suck, but eh. That's what adventuring is for, right? He's taking picture half of Mercer. Half moss. Taking picture of Mercy Rook. It's got hair. It's, got... it's a chia pet. It's a chia pet. So... That's not what I turned the camera on for. I turned the camera on because we're we're on this cliffy section, about 300 feet above the river, and it's more open forest, which means we have salal, 
everywhere. So figured in this different variation of the forest, I might as well record and run in the sunshine. So, you know, it's pretty. So I figured why not turn the camera on and get some shots of this. Uh oh. Ah, it's just along the side of the trail. We eat. I believe at some point fairly soon we're coming up to. This wasn't your last one. No. But at some point fairly soon in the future we should be coming up to what's called cliff camp as long as I don't die to impaling myself on this tree. And. For those of you that are wondering, we are two and two third miles in. So we've got about a mile and a half left. And yeah, we still got a little ways, probably a quarter mile or so to cliff camp. So just be rolling. Some schnurry perks in the Dursturnch. No idea what it is, because I'm not good enough. Uh oh, what Nash stopped for? Taking picture of foliage. Buds. In the buds. Get in the buds, bud. Get in the buds, bud. Focus. I don't even know what this is. Oh, this might be current. This might be a red currant red bush. Current? Oh, and then right behind Nash. Spiky is a wild rose. And then got oh, all kinds of other stuff. Got a shaggy Alaska yellow cedar. No, that's not a cedar. That's a very shaggily barked yew tree, maybe? Maybe. And then most of the rest of these are dug firs and hemis. And that is Oregon grape. You got sword fern. You got, I don't even know what that ground cover evergreen shrub is. And Nash taking more Red pictures front. of buds. No, I need you in front for scale. That's fine though. That's why we come out to hiking yeah. in the spring is to see the foliage after six long months of winter. Yeah, no, it would have been a lot more enjoyable winter if we actually would have got cold enough for sustained snow to go play in. Hence why there was no skiing or snowshoeing videos this year. Because every time it snowed, it would warm up the next day or two before we could go out and go play in it and just ruin it. And then it would rain and make it worse. Yeah, so that's why you got no snow videos this year because it wasn't very good. I remember this spot. Yep. Remember, this is when I was still carrying the 12th man flag and had you take a picture of me with it. I remember this. Halfway decent view. There should be another one coming up somewhere where you get to stand even further out on the rock and get better views. That might have been. That is, we're not there yet. So now we are finally, and I think permanently, going to be along the Gray Wolf River. Still deep in the shadows because, you know, it's only 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning on the first week of spring. So the sun doesn't get very high yet. Damn, just look at that river. That is some good, good-ish. So we did pass Cliff Camp about five minutes ago. We've got... About a mile or so to get to the end of the trail. And then we'll hang out there, shoot a long exposure, maybe throw the camera in the water if I can find a decent enough calm spot for it. Or I might just attach the selfie stick and then weigh that down so it can't go anywhere. We'll see. Don't know. And Cliff Camp back there was a scenic enough spot.
I was quiet there for 15 seconds to make sure I had a good spot to get a thumbnail and a bit for the hike. But cliff camp back there was a scenic enough spot that if there's if it's too crowded up here for an above water long exposure, I'll get one back there. So options. Always got to have options. But yeah, our next spot should be the end of the trail at the bridge washout. But we're along the river. Figured I'd let this roll a little bit. I mean just Look at that freaking pool, dude. I think that picture might be right there. I definitely know we hung out down there for a couple minutes last time. On the way back when the sun's beating down on the river. Maybe. A little run. I mean... The naturalist in me loves that spot, but the fly fisher in me really loves that spot. No idea what the fishing is like on the Grey Wolf River, but most bodies of water in Washington is closed during what they call the winter season, which is, I wanna say December 1st through March 31st. There's only a couple of rivers and lakes they leave open, except for, you know, the river, the big rivers you can fish winter steelhead for, but like regular, Pan fish fishing for trout and such is closed December 1st through March 31st. So that'll be something I'll have to remember this summer. Get better at this summer is bringing my fly pole with me. Fishing when I can fish. God dang. See, this is what I remember it being when we came in here last time, which is when January and the sun wasn't hardly up at all. But now we're past the spring equinox, so it's 12 hours a day and 12 hours a night. And the length of day is getting longer and longer, so who knows, maybe we'll get sunshine down here in the river bottom. God, this is just pretty. This, this is what you come for. Walking through the forest above the river is pretty and all, but being right here along the river, this is what it's about. Minor washout on the trail. Not uncommon. Not much you can do about it, but scamper across. And look, we might get into some sunshine too. If you're afraid of crossing stuff like this. I down this. Yeah, oh yeah. all the way up there and it's active all the time because there's no permanent vegetation not even alders trying to grow up in there which they colonize almost immediately so it's active all the time <sighs> sunshine and there's some of the telltale cliff forming pillowy basalt of the crescent formation. Again, basalt meaning it formed in the ocean. Pillow basalt means it was part of the flow that was actually contacting the ocean water at the surface. So think Hawaiian Islands style being made, except the Hawaiian Islands are, is they're all basalt and pillow basalt. So think of an ancient Hawaiian Island chain that got smushed into the ancient coast of Washington somewhere around 40, 45 million years ago. Because big picture geology, Washington obviously as a state didn't exist because, you know, American politics, but Washington as a complete geologic region and landform didn't exist more than about 100 million years ago. The current, or back then, the oceanic shoreline was somewhere in Idaho, northern Idaho. 
Yeah, so there must be someone else must have camped. Oh yeah, it's thick in the it's thick in the uh, treetops up here. So someone must have camped back here at the end of the trail or something. And there's another person hiking, so yeah, someone camped up here a little ways. And that's adding to the quote-unquote fogginess we've been seeing the last 15, 20 minutes. A lot of it's actual leftover campfire smoke. That's fine. We'll keep going. Any minute now, we should be getting to the end of the road. End of the trail, but you know what I mean. So, figured I'd turn this on so you can enjoy the mossy floor, the large cedars, and the last couple hundred feet of trail in the river before we get there because we should be coming up. Yeah, we are there. So we're gonna have Divide Creek coming in on the other side of the river and then any second now we'll be getting to the footbridge and our hangout spot. Look at that river. That is that is gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous and that is peak Washington Rainforest River right there. That is perfection. <coughs> Sorry, dip dip. It'd be really cool if the bridge would get put back in because as you saw at the very beginning this is part of the Pacific Northwest National Scenic Trail it's also one of the main rivers and ways in and out of the northeast corner of the Olympics it's all connected together so it would be really nice if this bridge was put in but who knows if that'll ever happen Leave going up that way. Going up here is going to be where the bridge blew out, and we're going to go sit down there. But first, we'll go show you what the bridge looks like. So, we have reached the end. This is the end. We're gonna go out over there somewhere. Oi, ding dong, this is the end. No, look up here. Huh, this has grown in a bit since we were here last. But yeah, the bridge went over. You can see the slide on the other side, but the bridge went over there so this is this is it we'll go find a spot down there to hang out and call her a day i'll post the uh long exposure that i take down there right there and then i'll see you on the way back i remember the other ones i remember for once I'm quickly running out of space. I'm gonna get my chair and I'm gonna sit with that one. Time to uh, leave our hangout spot for the last hour and a half. Um, not only did I take a regular above long exposure, but I did end up taking a underwater shot. Let me navigate this first. Oh, my butt's wet. Ah, I could do without. Uh, 
All right, so I think I've navigated the worst of that. Um, we're gonna go down over here. So yeah, I took a underwater shot. I will post that right. Ooh, that was bad. There, ooh, that was better. And then, because I'm pretty sure I didn't do it before coming down here, once we get back onto the trail, I'll look up towards where the blowout is. Which is going to be up that direction. So in order to continue going up the Grey Wolf Trail, we have to come down from a slab camp. If and when we do that, I'll post that video right there. And then there was this other spot we saw back here. There was another camp back along the trail at some point. We're next to a big, placid, deep pool of water. And Nash wanted to stop and hang out there for a bit. So uh, we'll do that next. Otherwise, it's time to start trudging back. And of course, it being almost two hours later in the day, the sun is higher and further into the sky. And it's nice. Yeah. So that's a Divide Creek coming in there. And if I get my map out, because I'm thinking of something. Divide Creek goes up and over. No, never mind. That's a different Divide Creek. Okay, never mind. I was say, I remember there being a Divide Camp along one of these trails, but no, that is not. That is a different Divide Creek going up towards what is called Three O'Clock Ridge. And then on the other side of Three O'Clock Ridge will be things like Mount Townsend and such. But yeah, this sunny section of forest deserves to have video shot of it with the river. So I'll let this run for another 30 seconds or so. Pretty spot, eh? Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad spot in between in between those two rocks over there. <sighs> but yes, YouTube, we did find out there was one other set of day hikers with us, and the vast majority of those rest of those cars at the lot, there was a large group of people camped back here about a quarter mile away from the end of the trail, and there was three adults and like five or six teenaged aged children so I believe that's where most of those cars came from and yeah so it was nice I do thoroughly enjoy these trails they're not you know you're not walking on top of a ridge line or to an alpine lake you're just walking through deep forest along a river but it's got plenty of its own beauty in itself and it's always nice to do plus it's the perfect time of year to go do them because in the next couple weeks Things will be further butted out and all the forest flowers will be coming out and everything up high is still melted. So it's the perfect time to be in the forest. It is in April and in May. What we're gonna do, we're gonna we'll get some underwater shots from there. Okay. Yeah. Yep, ready? Here we go. Go. Yeah, continue. Go on. Go ahead. I ain't moving. You're high. I ain't going anywhere. The only way I'm going is down the trail.
nice big pool there. That little sandy strip there. We just hung out there for a nice, what, hour and a half, almost? Yeah. Yeah. We hung out down there for a solid hour and a half. Eventually the sun did come out, as you can tell, so we got nice sunshine. I was reading, Nash was just soaking in the warmth. So, I did take a long exposure before the sun came out. Post that right there. But now it is time to head back. Now, in July, August, and September, catch me up in the high ridges at 6,000 feet where the air is thin, the trees are small, and usually the only thing taller than me are the volcanoes and the glaciers. But in March, April, and May, it's the time to hang out in the deep woods and the sage steppe deserts because that's where it is to be. That's where best time to be down here. Because in the next week or so, this foliage will be out, the flowers will be popping, and it'll be nice and comfortable down here. Being down here in July and August, could be 85 degrees. Out in the desert, it'll be 105 degrees. Up on top of those ridges, a comfortable 70. But ridges are not snow free until usually July 1st at the earliest. So here we are trundling through one of many, many, many innumerable miles of the deep forest trail. Enjoying the thick trees and the greenery, the permanent greenery of the low elevation rivers. Um, you know, I'm not sure. I don't think I want to run my outro when we're away from the river and back on the old road. So I think I'm going to run it now. I'll keep recording after the intro, but I think I'll run it now. Thank you for joining us on this Cooley Outdoors adventure. I've been your host, Brandon Scott. Along with me has been my trusty companion, Nash up the lower Grey Wolf River in the Buckhorn Wilderness of the Northeastern Olympic Peninsula. If you liked the video, ooh, there's a swimming hole right there. Give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Either way, please let me know what you did or did not like about it so I can improve the video for next time. Um, ratings, accessibility, what less than a two hour drive from Seattle and there wasn't much dirt and it's a main thoroughfare road to multiple other trailheads so it's probably going to be kept in pretty decent condition I'd say a solid three and a half stars difficulty not <laughs> couple short ups and downs to avoid cliffs otherwise it's a river walk of four miles it's two stars well yeah got it it's also four four miles one way so yeah, I'd say one and a half or two stars. And enjoyment. Like I'm saying, my preference is to climb up high onto a ridge line or get to a high mountain lake, but that's not available this time of year. And there's nothing to be wrong about this. Most of the time you are in wilderness in old growth forest along a absolutely gorgeous river. So I'm gonna give a solid three, three and a half. Three for the season. Yeah, three or three and a half. Yeah, if we were to be back here a couple weeks later when the flowers are out, it'd probably be a three and a half solid. But yeah, I'd say a three. Nothing wrong with it. And plus, it's low enough elevation that unless there's a fresh snowstorm dumping into the Seattle area right then and there, you can probably get here year round and adventure around in it year round. So that's also a plus. So yeah, um, it might move up in our top 10 list. I don't know. It might have already been moved up because someone might have says he's updated his buckhorn list so i don't know we'll have to check and see you'll see that part at the start of the video otherwise i have no idea what we're doing next my parents come home from their two-week mini winter vacation in hawaii on this upcoming tuesday the 26th and nash starts his summer job with the city of redmond here on april 1st so 
this upcoming week is going to be the last week of running all three of the available for everyone to run at any time any day of the week and then we'll be at least with nash bracketed to weekends but father and i can still go out and go do whatever but yeah april and may gonna make a concerted effort to either be on the ocean beaches in the lowland forest like this or out in the desert for the next eight weeks or so and then june will roll around and we'll start getting up higher in the mountains so other than those three topics i don't know i have ideas i want to go to steamboat rock i want to go to white bluffs and hanford reach i want to go to drumheller channels those are all desert hikes yeah we do palouse falls dry falls there's some other there's some other really good desert hikes that once i'm done crunching through the books i'll have a actual list and then as for river walks there's always the um oh god lewis river yes where the lewis falls are there's a multitude of rivers on this side in the olympics that we haven't ever done before there's a whole bunch of rivers they'll start opening up like i want to go do the north fork sock river that eventually leads up to white and red pass which is the main summit route for glacier peak um, maybe the suado river if that drainage is open up because it's been closed the last three years due to wildfire damage and of course there's a multitude of other rivers that I can't think of at the top of my head that we'll hopefully do and then summer will be summer and we'll figure that out as we go the only thing I can guarantee for sure is that coming in middle of August we'll be going to Yellowstone for a week and a half no, not the TV show, the park. I know I'm going. I know Serena's going. I know about 95% sure Nash is going. And hopefully Riley is coming. At the moment he's leaning towards a yes. And then I'm pretty sure Jacob and his girlfriend are coming. So there will be lots to see and do there as I get to act as tour guide showing some of my best friends around one of my favorite places in the world for the first time. But that's still five months away. Hopefully we get a lot of... Yeah. Hopefully we've got a lot of adventures in those 20 weeks between now and then. Otherwise, we are leaving the river momentarily to get past this large basalt cliff and with that I will shut my app and we will see you next time thank you for joining us and ciao It became really difficult to talk and go up at the same time. Yeah. <sighs>